Hey everybody, welcome back to Havoc Maker Studio and FMP Wargamers. My name is John, and this is part three to um, a series of videos I'm doing. I can probably do four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I could probably do a dozen of these videos in regards to villain teams and uh, this issue that I've seen with Atomic Mass Games that some of you have probably seen before or not, not, may not even thought about. It's not a big deal. But I saw that there is a disparity in the number of villains to heroes, not only in the characters available for us to play, but also in the number of, of affiliations that we play. And so I just doing this series of videos on it and putting forth my suggestions on some big names or maybe even not some big names, but some little name ones that could be really characterful, really great to see. Because a lot of those early incarnations of villains and super villain teams yeah they might be b listers c listers that sort of thing but visually they're stunning to see costume wise garish colorful costumes crazy names crazy power sets that would be great to see on the tabletop and i think that it's time that marvel christ protocols uh, creators owners atomic mass games starts pushing towards getting some more villains out there. I'm not saying every release for the next year, year and a half needs to be super villains, but we, there should be like a, a, a swap up or change up, you know, so two to one or a three to one um, release type of thing. Like if we're going to be putting out three boxes, two of those need to be all about villains. One about heroes. We need to kind of start switching that up. Is it necessary to uh, shrink that gap? Yes and no. I understand that you know a lot, a lot of a lot of people out there are like, well, you know, people know heroes. They really don't know villains. Well, we need to change that around because what makes a hero is the actions they take against the villains. That those villains help shape the heroes, and sometimes those heroes help shape the villains there it's a symbiotic relationship and atomic mass games needs to address this. Now let's take a look at the numbers. We're going to look at a lot of stuff, but I'm only this time. This is the third video. Barely any time is going to be spent on these numbers. I've already gone over them numerous times and you can pause and look at the numbers specifically. I, what I want to do is get into the character, the characters and uh, their teams over these numbers again, but let's take a real quick recap. So as you can see here, that there's 110 characters available, predominantly, at least 20% are oh, more are heroes. And that doesn't sound like a big number, but that number should be probably around 10 to 12% because it's 23 uh, character difference between heroes and villains. That's a, that is a big number guys. That's not, that's not a small number, 23. That's over half the total that uh, villains have. That puts them at a 60-40 discrepancy. Now, I'm not including the, the rogue agents, as I've said before. Um, once again, you can pause this and take a look at those numbers. You can go to their webpage. The characters does not include the number of uh, models because some characters, as I've said in previous videos, have multiple models. Ant-Man, Wasp, The Hood. I'm not counting those or the reprint or not reprint but new sculpts of old characters but that have the same old cards like iron man dr octopus so just so we're on the same page and not only on characters but we have a team affiliation issue as well we have 12 hero affiliations versus uh six villain ones i'm not including the unaffiliated um i wasn't going to include dark dark dimension but i included that on there but and then I changed my mind. Now, Dark Dimension is actually with the villain team. So we have a total of 18 affiliations. And that's a 32% gap-ish, or I guess 32% different, whatever, however you want to however you want to work. That's 66% to 34%. That needs to be closer to the 50%. Does it have to be 100% even, Steven? No. But there needs to be a smaller gap there double the amount of hero teams versus villain teams. Come on guys, Let, let's do something about this. And let's talk about what we can do. First up is the Frightful Four. 
Now, the Frightful Four is primarily a Fantastic Four villain group, but they do consist of heroes and villains that have made their way um, throughout the Marvel Universe. So, um, starting at the center, the guy with the, the gun and the purple outfit, that is Post Pate, Post Paste Pete. I think that's how you say his name. Uh, he is uh, essentially just a character running around with a, 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 basically a super suit that has um, a glue gun. And I know that sounds weird, but his glue gun is actually a... Um, it, uh, the glue, once it hits people, it sticks to pretty much anything. And it's almost... Um, indestructible, flame-proof, and a few other things, which I think is absolutely uh, <laughs> pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but that's really all it does. He just glues people and sticks them around. Uh, and he has a he has another ability that can use with that where he can um, kind of shoot it out like Spider-Man does with his web shooter, and he can swing and then he retracts it, and then he shoots it with his other gun, and he just kind of keeps going. He can swing basically like Spider-Man. Not a lot of great powers there, but I think visual, that, that could be a really cool. He's going to be maybe a two-point character, two-threat character in the game, but we could see him sculpted really awesome, maybe even like that. He's got probably would have some web-walking ability. Um, he can do a lot of... St- well, I guess it would count as stun or stagger, uh, where you stick people. They can't; they're immobilized. It basically, you can stop people from moving around. And there's a lot of characters right now with a lot of free bonus uh, movement abilities. And so he might be a good counter to stop people from moving around. You know, this could be even a new status condition that limits people's movements. So it could totally remove any bonus movement like, um, Hey, if you roll wild symbol on this attack, you can make a medium movement right after at right afterwards. He could be a counter to all those free movement abilities that are out there. Perfect. Um, the uh, lady with the messy hair, that's Medusa from the Inhumans. She's already available right now as a model. Uh, she had amnesia during this, the very brief time with the frightful four and keep in mind the frightful four, there are many iterations of it, but this is the classic group. Um, floating up above is the wizard. Um, actually, I think he, if I remember in the comics, there's something very funny where he actually officially changed his name to, uh, legally changed it to the wizard. Um, he doesn't have powers per se, but he basically is, we're talking near Tony Stark level genius and super suit, the whole, the whole works. Um, he even, if I remember correctly, he even did a little bit of work with the, um, the, the wrecking crew and, um, uh, dark Avengers. Um, I know he definitely allied with Norman Osborn during the dark rain saga. So definitely some cool abilities there fly around. He's got some gravitic powers along with his, uh, costume energy blast, this sort of thing, kind of a lower end, um, Tony Stark, Iron Man, but definitely you can swap up some of his powers there. And then, of course, the bottom right is the Sandman, who's shown up in a number of movies. Um, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, I think the third movie. Uh, yeah, the third movie was eh. And then recently in the third, I, I don't know, is it No Way Home or I Can't Find My Home? I'm a latchkey kid home Spider-Man with Tom Holland, that jerk. Uh <laughs> If you know the story behind my dislike of Tom Holland, uh, put it in the comments below. But uh, he's shown up er- uh, already there in cartoons, video games. So he's definitely uh, something that could pop up. Now, um, crossover affiliations. Sandman has been a part of the Sinister Six, which is in the game, in the Marvel Crisis Protocol game, is the Spider Foes. So there's dual affiliations there. And Medusa, of course, in the Inhumans. And like I said, Wizard has been in, I believe, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure he's with the Wrecking Crew, which I talked about uh, the day before in part one video and um, loosely with the Dark Avengers. So I I think so. This would be good, especially if the Fantastic Four comes out. 
with uh, Dr. Doom and Doom bots who could be grunts. I've talked about that in a previous video. I think this would be a good choice. Now let's talk about the four horsemen of Apocalypse. This is a definitely a solid choice. Now, if we'll see this version of the four horsemen or the newest version, which is actually the first iteration of the four horsemen when <laughs> Apocalypse assembled them, but we're just now seeing them now. Um, in recent comics, they've come back um, during the Sword of X series. But our initial for our initial foray into the Four Horsemen is what you're seeing here back during the early days of the first X Force comics, where it was the X Men went over to be uh, the initial X Men went over to be the Four or be X Force. And um, I talked about in a previous video about something that naughty that the Marauders did. This is when, um, this is just after, or a little bit after the Marauders brutally assaulted uh, Angel or Kenneth Worthington III, one of the original founding members of the X Men, um, that were all not any retcons, but one of the originals. They had impaled him on the wall. He had his wings amputated. A lot of just horrible things happened to him. Um, Apocalypse blew up his plane when he was flying around and everybody thought he was dead. He took him, turned him into death. And so we got Angel turned into Archangel, which is by far, I think, what we need to see on the tabletop first. Uh, visually, he's awesome. He'd be a great flyer, really probably long flight movement. He's got neurotoxin um, feathers, basically metal feathers that come out of his wings. He's got enhanced strength and durability. Uh, maneuverability and everything like that. He's just a souped up version of his original self, actually a much better version of, Hey, I got some big dove wings. I'm going to flap around and punch people and then be useless for the rest of the uh, rest of the flight. I'm just going to fly around and look like I'm cool. So <laughs> get him out of there, put in the archangel. I think everybody would like to see that. Then the three horsemen in the center, right? Riding those weird eighties, nineties robot horses or whatever they are. Left or right, we have famine, or sorry, de uh, pestilence, who had the ability to infect people with deadly, debilitating viruses, obviously with a name like pestilence. Uh, she was, I would say, the most dangerous member of that group. And then we have war in the center. Basically, you just clap his hands and create some explosions. Um, he had a few other minor abilities, but that was his big claim to fame. He just um, clap on, clap off. I get some energy explosions and then famine uh, kind of scary, but not really, um, not really, uh, basically it's kind of along the same lines as pestilence, uh, as debilitating stuff that they can do to people. But other than, you know, making your food go bad, <laughs> making you very hungry, uh, not too great from the tabletop, but could be. And then, when Archangel, you know, broke free of his conditioning and went to be with the the X Men and his, and his friends and family, uh, Apocalypse turned Caliban, who was one of the Morlocks that were wiped out by the Marauders in that previous video, souped him up, and he became Death. And he was great. He was already being used because he has a mutant tracking ability, so he was like ideal. Um, so souped him up, made him super aggressive, super strong, and he had his mutant ability. Now I will do a future video on the first, the actual first incarnation of the four horsemen. And cause they are terrifying visually and power wise. And I think that's what we should get over the original group here, but who knows? We'll see that in the future. Let's move on to the next group, uh, serpent society. And this one is a bit of a chuckle. It was ba definitely back in the heyday when they had very, um, heavy themed, uh, character groups like uh, the Serpent Society. There was um, the Zodiac. I think they were just called the Zodiac. All the all the members were a or, were a Zodiac uh, member, or their costumes and their powers were based on a Zodiac symbol. So Serpent Society is definitely along that lines. There's a big roster. I'm not going to go through them all, but I will highlight a few of them. Like um, Anaconda, she's in the bottom right there really strong. She had um, stretchy arms and legs and she would wrap around people and crush them. Um, Black Mamba is in there somewhere. I think it's the bottom left there. I don't remember what her powers are. We have Death Adder, a lot of poison related groups there, by the way. Uh, the Constrictor, Diamondback, who actually ends up becoming um, a hero at one point, siding, running around with um, 
Captain America back in the 90s. They had a, a fling going on. I don't know if she's still good or still bad. Multiple versions of Cobra uh, and King Cobra. I think this is probably on the low end of coming out, but I think it would still be a good because you have a nice big roster and you don't even have to hit the, the big roster. You just go for the ones with some cool variations of power. There's probably going to be lots of poison running around in there. Um, lots of movement abilities, super strength, and some energy blast sort of thing or stinger blast. Will we see this? Uh, this is definitely on the low end, but I, I, I would definitely put it as one of those examples. Do you have to do the full roster? Absolutely not. Just get about six of them and aim for that. I'm not going to spend too much my, <clears throat> excuse me, too much time on them. Let's move on to one of the groups that people have talked to me about. They really want to see. Let's talk about the Dark Avengers Assemble. Okay, I don't think they say Avengers Assemble or Dark Avengers Assemble, but we definitely need to talk about them. So the Dark Avengers came um, came about uh, sometime during the Dark Reign. Um, Norman Osborn took over. Um, S.H.I.E.L.D. became the, uh, turned it into Hammer. Um, I think that whatever that acronym is and went on from there. There's a lot of weird, weird things kind of going on. Uh, a lot of bad things were happening. The Avengers were had dis had gone through a disassemble, um, arc. And, uh, I think we're at post civil war going into civil war two, a lot of really bad, bad, dark times for the Marvel crisis or the Marvel universe. Now going from, uh, right to left, we have, Mac Gargan in the uh, filling in basically or portraying Spider-Man. He was just now they all these are disguised as their alternate versions or just new characters. So Mac Gargan, who is normally the Scorpion, um, got he was given this the Venom. He was basically Venom for a, a short period of time, but he in this role he is Spider-Man, more brutal Spider-Man that people started noticing, but still Spider-Man. Behind him is um, Hawkeye, who is actually played by Bullseye. And then later, um, Trap Shooter. I can't remember the character, or Trick Shot. Uh, but that is um, Bullseye, uh, who is definitely a, a villain for... Um, well, he's already in Marvel Crisis Protocol as um, a counter to Matt Murdock, uh, Daredevil. And then we have... Not Wolverine, but Wolverine. It's actually his son, Dakin. Um, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing that right. This is literally his son. Um, he's got three claws, just like Wolverine, but the he's got two claws on top of his hands, just like Wolverine. But the third claw comes out from underneath his wrist. He also has a pheromone ability, and he has, a, um, he has that heightened... Pretty much everything else that Wolverine has, he has, just with different types of claws and the pheromone ability. Uh, next, that big buff guy with the crop top <laughs> shirt from like the, the 80s and 90s um, is Ares. And I don't remember if he's actually the God of War Ares. I don't think he is. I think he's actually a, an, an, a regular human person that's all buffed up. But he is Ares, God of War, uh, kind of filling in for Thor. But he is not Thor. He's literally recognized as Ares. The star spangly guy in the center is actually Norman Osborn, Green Goblin, as the Iron Patriot. And he's the one that assembled the team. And so he basically is um, just a twisted version of, um, and less, slightly less smarter version of Tony Stark, but much more manipulative. And then uh, next to them is actually Moonstone, which I talked about previously in uh, the Thunderbolts. And Masters of Evil. So now we've got one character that's on all three rosters. Yay! That's really awesome. Uh, so she's filling in as Captain Marvel or Miss Marvel here. That large lad in the yellow and blue, that is Sentry. Um, we can do a very lengthy video on him in the future, but he's got like the power of a million exploding suns. It's either a million or a billion exploding suns. He is... Um, in a way, a parody character of, of Superman, um, but he's mentally unstable. He has another alternate version of himself called the Void that he's always battling against. Um, he is 
uh, very mentally unstable. He does a lot of naughty things and he does a lot of good things. I don't foresee him coming into the game because he is extraordinary. Well, you know, we got Dormammu and Thanos, so we might see him. And then on the end there, that is not Quicksilver, who I thought originally. It's actually no, man, I'm going to do a bad job of pronouncing this, no Var. Um, he is a um, Cree, it would be Cree, a guy with superpowers. He's actually um, filling in as a, uh, he's not filling in as anybody else. He looks like Quicksilver, who I originally thought that's um, who he was. But it, uh, he in this version, he is filling in as, um, I believe, Marvel Boy. Um, actually, I'm going to look at it right now. Um, but he has a lot of similar powers to, well, actually, most of the powers are kind of related to technology. But uh, Kree physiology, so already he's better than humans. Advanced extra dimensional t technology, um, a lot of microtech. He's just a very souped up power a powerful person. Um, now, a lot of people like the Dark Avengers because, I mean, who doesn't like twisted versions of their heroes? But what are the chances of us seeing this twisted version of the Avengers? I'm going to put it actually on the lower end. And yes, I realize that we're starting to get a Dark Avengers and Thunderbolts in the MCU, some version of them. I get it. I just don't see this one necessarily happening when there are other more established hero or villain teams out there versus this one. But I could see this happening. I definitely could see it. Um, I did. I think it could end up be confusing for people. It's like, wait, why is Wolverine? Why do we have this version of Wolverine and Spider-Man, Captain Marvel and and Bullseye? This doesn't make any sense unless they give a different um, uh, costume version or something like that. That's why I can see the Thunderbolts over the Dark Avengers, but I wanted to include them because they are a very popular crowd or very popular supervillain group that I think a lot of people would like to see. Definitely on the fanboy wish listing. So I wanted definitely to include them. Now I can see for sure uh, Sentry, actually, when I think about it, Sentry could be popping up later on, but the Dark Avengers, I don't know. Uh, uh, let me know what you guys think. I, I mean, is it doable? Hell yeah, it's doable. All these characters can be easily um, created. Heck, you could probably even make, based on what we have right here and what's in the game right now, uh, model-wise, you could almost do a, I guess, dark version of all these characters or this version of all these characters out of Iron Patriot, Wolverine, um, Hawkeye, and everything like that. You could do that visually. Um and the power-wise, we have symbiote powers, we have bullseye's powers, we have Wolverine, we have all this. Uh, we can do this. It's definitely doable. I just don't know if we'll see it from a consumer point of view. It's like, mommy, why? What, what's this? I don't remember Wolverine being a bad guy. Uh, why? Why is Why is Spider-Man really mean? That sort of thing. It's possible. I'm just putting it. In the 50% or lower range. Sentry, I'm putting around the 75% range. I think we'll see, you know, Dr. Doom before we see Sentry. I think we'll see, I don't know, um, whoever, Apocalypse before we see Sentry. Sentry is definitely a big powerhouse. But I think there's a couple other powerhouses out there that we will see before um, we see Sentry. And... Yes, there are other groups out there. I know that uh, other people have mentioned, say, Squadron Supreme or, say, the Imperial Guard from the Shi'ar Empire. Um, I, I get it. They're not really Shi'ar. The Imperial Guard are not really a villain group. But, and, and yes, I understand also that the Squadron Supreme are not a villain group. They're kind of an analog, parody analog to uh, the Justice League. But they could make their way still into it because they do have a very bad version. They're, they've never been seen in a very favorable light. So I can see them becoming um, a villain group. Be a, a great. I think they would be great. But we're going to talk about them in a later video because they deserve their own attention just like um, well, a few other groups that I'm going to save for later. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I have the links for Recalibration Network uh, or 
I keep saying that recalibration matrix, their Facebook page and their um, link on um, across the Bifrost. So there's a probably the only video I'm uh, today, as I've mentioned before, we have a lot of uh, cold weather and possibility of, of ice and loss of power and all that kind of stuff happening. So I don't know if I'll get another video out even this week, but you know what? There's probably going to be a drop from Marvel Crisis Protocol from Atomic Mass Games, and I'm going to do a hot take, um, much to the chagrin of other people. So if I don't see you guys, it'll be next uh, Monday or Tuesday. We'll have another video out there. And let me know if you guys want to see some more uh, villain groups, because uh, there's definitely a lot that I can think of right off the top of my head that I want to do, but maybe I haven't hit the one that you want to talk about. Um, that that's, a, I'm glaring that glaringly missing. Let me know. I will definitely do the research on it. If I don't know firsthand and we'll do some videos covering those favorite groups, just put it in the comments below. Anyways, if you are being affected by all this very cold, uh, ice storm weather, that's starting to roll through, um, Texas all the way up to, um, the tri-state area, please be safe. Don't do unnecessary driving. Regardless of your capabilities, it's not you that I'm worried about. Um, it's uh, your your abilities. It's the other people out on the road that are not as competent as you and I are when it comes to dealing with the cold weather. So please be careful, stay warm, and stay safe. And I will talk to you guys really soon. Have a wonderful day. See you guys later.